George Santos, Herschel Walker, Donald J. Trump. Say hi, Tiny. What do these three menses have in common? Hypocrisy. For the uninitiated, George Santos is the homosexual politician that is still out here championing anti-LGBTQ legislation. And this is a photo of him. Allegedly. In drag back in the day. Now, why would a politician who is out here championing anti-LGBTQ legislation have been all up in the rags? That's kind of hypocritical. Herschel Walker, uh, you know, he's the man down in Georgia that really thought he was going to steal Raphael Warnock's seat. He was out here giving all the right wing talking points. And one of those was about abortion. But then come to find out, or as we say in Wolof, fake wool. Somebody, oh, came out and said that he allegedly tried to convince her to get an abortion twice. His son, Christian Walker. I very much love gender roles. I like masculine men and I want my masculine man to pick the check up. Yes, that Christian Walker. He was all up on Twitter talking about how his dad is a, he didn't call him a scumbag, <laughs> but he did say that he was a hypocrite. How you gonna be out here being a father to all these different kids with all these different baby mamas and you were telling people that you believe in traditional family values, conservative family values, no, we are pro-life and you were out here trying to convince other people to have a moon. That seems a bit, like Christian said, hypocritical. And Donald Trump, well, I, the list goes on. Now it would be all too easy to sit up here and read out a laundry list of right-wing conservative hypocrisy. But you know, we don't just talk about the easy stuff over here. So today we're gonna talk about it. But before we do, bonjour, welcome, hi. Welcome slash welcome back to my channel. Nieces, nephews, nibblings, aunties, uncles, piblings, y'all know what to do. But if you're new, feel free to take a look around. Suss out the vibe. I just sit in my living room and talk about whatever I want. And today I want to talk about, yeah, whatever the title of this video says. Before we do that, let's give a quick shout out to today's sponsor and then let's get into it. Thank you to Helix for sponsoring today's video. Oh. Uh, another morning, another moment where I have to get away from my beautiful Helix premium mattress. Why must the gods be so cruel? <laughs> Mondays, am I right? But for real, I've had my lovely Helix mattress and pillows for about, I think it's been a year and a half, but honestly, it feels like it's always been this way. Isn't that right, Tiny? That's Tiny. That's his favorite spot of the bed. Thanks, Tiny. When I first was getting the mattress, I took the Helix Sleep Quiz and got the Midnight Lux. And honestly, it's been, oh, it's so good. This bed is so nice. With the Sleep Quiz, they ask you questions to try to get a bed that matches your body type and your sleeping preferences, which I appreciate because this bed is exactly what I wanted. Firm, but soft, like me. Helix delivers this mattress right to your door, wrapped up in a box so you can unravel it, pull out the plastic, watch it inflate, and bing, bang, bong, sing, sang, song, you got your mattress. Going to bed is my favorite time of the day. Before this, I had a mattress that I had had for like six years, y'all. It was fine, but like, there's something about this bed. Me and the cats are hanging out in here. Anytime I've entertained a lover, you know, they enjoy this mattress. It's one of the best. Honestly, it gets great reviews. Like the mattress alone gets great reviews. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> and they offer a hundred night sleep trial, which is three months of you getting to test out this mattress to see how it feels, how you like it. Plus Helix has a 10 year warranty and they offer financing. So, you know, good night's sleep is never too far away. As you can tell, I love this bed. And if you're in the market for a new mattress and slash or bedding, go to helixsleep.com slash Khadija to get 20% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Oh, the pillows, so nice. Mm. Thank you again to Helix for sponsoring today's video and thanks to y'all for supporting a brand that supports this channel. All right, 
let's get back into it. I'm going back to sleep. Honestly, I'm so tired. <laughs> So what inspired this video? Well, if you've been on Instagram over the past week, there was this clip going around from the Jon Stewart show, The Problem with Jon Stewart. And it's him having a quote interview debate. Y'all know when I say debate like that, <laughs> anyway. But he was interviewing Oklahoma Senator Nathan Dom. Now the clip that they shared online, YouTube and Instagram is about eight or nine minutes and I watched that whole thing. But the snippet that was coming out that I saw, and maybe it's because my algorithm is just so gay. Boots the house down while my yes, God. Was the last section. Travis, roll the clip. Yes, master. You wanna ban drag show readings to children? To my house, yes. Why? Why, why, what are you protecting? Why can we prohibit children from voting, those under 18 from voting? Why are you banning, also that? Is, is that free speech? Are you infringing on that performer's free speech? They can continue to exercise their free speech, just not in front of a child. Why? Because the government does have a responsibility to protect. I'm sorry? The government does have a responsibility uh -huh. in certain instances to What's protect children. What's the leading cause of death amongst children in this country? And I'm gonna give you a hint. It's not drag show readings to children. Correct, yes. So what is it? I'm presuming you're gonna say it's firearms. No, I'm not gonna say it like it's an opinion. That's what it is. It's firearms, more than cancer, more than car accidents. And what you're telling me is, you don't mind infringing free speech to protect children from this amorphous thing that you think of. But when it comes to children that have died, you don't give a flying fuck to stop that because that shall not be infringed. That is hypocrisy at its highest order. Now, there were many things about this interview that I appreciated being said, but ugh, John, John, John. As much as I love a moral dressing down of a hypocrite especially, because I do love it. What was the reason? Because the entire time, even though John Stewart is stating facts, truth, things that other people smarter than him have studied and and presented to him. I'm sure he has fact checkers and, and researchers of all kind at that show. Even if all of the stuff he's saying is correct, the thing that I'm not sure he understood is that he is talking to someone who doesn't give a fuck about being a hypocrite. This is something that I see a lot in progressive leftist spaces. This is why I'm not a fan of the debate, bro. The exact way that the results in Bolivia were being, go ahead and deliver me whatever dumb fucking Twitter thread you were fucking reading on, dude. Please tell me exactly, please tell me. You motherfucker, you don't know. Or reaction and just talking shit about, oh, look at how dumb these right, these people on the right are. Oh, look at how hypocritical they are, blah, blah. Because it implies that the people that are peddling this stuff don't know what they're doing or that it's not as intentional or that it's an individual thing where either they just don't know better, they're too stupid to learn or that their hypocrisy is holier than thou and blah, 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 blah. These people know what they're doing, especially these folks that are in public office. This whole debate, Jon Stewart is saying all of these facts and, and statistics and is like trying to get this man to see reason and logic, to just understand that his whole point about wanting more guns to make people safe doesn't make sense, that everything he's saying, he's contradicting himself, that he's tripping over his own words. John Stewart is trying to get him to see this, but at no point does it occur to him that he could throw all the facts, stats, and information and it could all be absolutely true and backed up by experts. And this man is not gonna change his mind or admit that he's wrong or even care that you're calling him a hypocrite because he's still in public office making these policies. He still has the power to do that stuff to affect people's lives in Oklahoma. Is this right wing hypocrisy or is it the right's coherent vision for enforcing a very specific social order? What is it going to take for liberals to understand that hypocrisy is not a charge for which right-wing authoritarians must answer at the risk of losing clout, but a tenant of and a testament to their power? The fact that these people can contradict themselves, can pretend to care about issues, it, it, 
it's clear they don't care about and act hypocritically at every turn and still maintain the positions of power that they have is the reason that calling them hypocrites or pointing out the hypocrisy of the right constantly trying to stand on a moral high ground isn't going to do anything. It might make us feel good for a bit. Sure, I'm not against that. But then what is going to happen after? The reason these people are able to (laughs) act in these ways is because honestly, they know how to organize and get the people that they want into, and I know democracy is a bit of a, but they know how to get people that they want elected. They know how to get leaders into positions of power that affect social and political systems, things that affect our everyday lives. Being quote unquote better than them or smarter than them or more superior because you care about people and it's obvious that they don't, isn't really gonna do much to people that don't care about people, especially people that like to use children as an excuse. Speaking of children. What's the leading cause of death amongst children in this country? And I'm gonna give you a hint. It's not drag show readings to children. Correct, yes. So what is it? I'm presuming you're gonna say it's firearms. No, I'm not gonna say it like it's an opinion. That's what it is. It's firearms. More than cancer, more than car accidents. Yes, it's a fact. Senator Dom does not give a fuck about your children. Oftentimes when I see debates or interviews like this or panels or people are arguing, It's maddening because sometimes, and I have been this person, so I get it, but I want to shake all of us and just be like, these people know exactly what they're doing to your children. They do not want to see the weirdo queerdos, the the confusing gender non-conforming, the trans kids. They don't want to see any of it anywhere. Even if your child who feels like that is at a much higher risk of unaliving themselves, These people do not care. And talking about the debate that they were specifically talking about, gun violence. It is not this man's kids that are likely to be victims of gun violence, at least in their mind, right? I don't even know if this man has kids, but this goes to a more general point. I mean, you can even look at the pro-life argument that a lot of folks that are right-leaning will say. They will talk about wanting to be pro-life, But if you ask those same people, are you going to be okay paying higher taxes to help with social programs for all these kids in these areas? No, but I thought you cared about the kids. I mean, Sandy Hook taught us if they weren't going to care about little white kids getting killed at school just for going to school, they were never going to care, y'all. That should have showed you. And people like Representative Dom, they're not worried that it's going to be their children. So why would they need to care? Why would they need to worry about being called hypocrites in the first place? They're not losing anything. They might look stupid for a few minutes, but they can go nurse their wounds with the people that think like them. It's really not that complicated. Dom and his ilk don't care about protecting children. They care about protecting certain children from certain things, like books and drag queens, that they consider threats to a white supremacist patriarchal social order. That's it. With this understanding, what's even the point of pretending to debate a creep like Dom on policy particulars? So what did we learn? (laughs) I am not trying to say that I didn't enjoy this public dressing down, that I wasn't appreciative of a cis white hetero man with, I don't know, maybe something to lose, I don't know. Not really, but you know, saying some shit and standing up for the little guy. However, I am always talking to y'all about practical action because we could talk all day long, all up and through these internets about the shit that's going left and what we hate about it. But if we don't do anything, then, We just talking. And something that I think people that are more conservative and right-leaning know how to do is talk, but also put that shit into action, particularly legislation. I'm doing research for season three of You Can Always Change Your Mind and something that's coming up because I'm trying to focus a lot more on history actually, uh, is just how much We make progress and then we feel like things are going back and then we make progress and then it feels like things are going back. And that's just the nature of things, sure. 
but it's also about remaining vigilant. And I think clips like this, even if they're great, even if they make sense and they're passing around that good information that we need and calling these people out on their hypocrisy and their lies to let people know, hey, this is who you probably shouldn't vote for. It's a momentary bit of feeling good. It's like the infographics, you know? It feels good to repost. You feel special, you feel like you did something or you cared enough to do something. But that doesn't always materialize in the real world. And thinking that people like this care about being seen as hypocrites or care about at all whatever moral high ground we have to stand on is a mistake that I've made. And maybe some of them do, but it seems like a good portion of them, or at least senators like this one, scammers like George Santos, all these types of people, you're trying to have a moral high ground with people that have shown you their morals. They've shown you. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. That doesn't really mean that people get second chances, so I don't really agree with that, but you know. I wanna read y'all one last quote from an article that I was quoting a lot from called It's Not About Hypocrisy by Laura Wagner. Pointing out so-called right-wing hypocrisy might make the Jon Stewart watching crowd feel superior to their political foes, but it does nothing to actually build a movement capable of overcoming them. In fact, it does worse than nothing. Its smugness serves to flatter the sensibilities of its liberal viewers while obscuring the way political power is built and used in this country. We can be smug and we can celebrate when people get their comeuppance, but if there's nothing happening after that, we're just being smug. I'm gonna put um, my resources in the link as well, as always, but I will also put a link to an episode from If Books Could Kill, of course, a podcast that I adore, but Michael Hobbs is a journalist and researcher that I respect. It illuminates a lot of the things that, a lot of the talking points and, and jargon that people are using against trans kids particularly, it combats a lot of that. And if anything, it's a great thing to have to just arm you with information as well, because I think it's important when we have so much information coming at you and you, it's hard to know what's real and what's not. So yeah. Uh, Lydia, hi, do you wanna say bye? You wanna say bye? Anyways, let me know your thoughts below. Oh, Lydia, girl. As always, don't forget to feed your plants, water your plants, and remember that you can always change your mind because you can, like that. <laughs> Lydia's like, girl, if you don't put me down. <laughs> yeah, oh, feed your plants, water your plants, you can always change your mind. Uh, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. You'll never find. Clap. I'm not trying, anyway. Travis, cut that, cut that. Cut all of this. Oh my God. Come on. Like a little dog. Say hi, Lydia. As long as you love someone who cares about you. God, this place is so ashy. Oh my God. Like I do. Oh, I'm not bragging on myself, baby. But I'm the one who loves you, and there is no one else, no. One else. This is for the ladies in the back. You'll never find. <laughs> I tried to do that solo. God, Travis, you might have to bleep so much of this. Actually, I can't even say that.